Hi everyone, it's my one year travelversary. So I left America one year ago today. I head to the island of Key Cocker in Belize and I have been traveling since then. So I can't believe it. I can't believe I've been on the road a year. Whoa! Like I would have never thought a year ago, a little over a year ago that this would be my life. It's crazy. It's totally crazy, you know, but I took the chance and I risked a lot of people thinking I was crazy and had gone off the deep end to do this. And, you know, I ended up finding my passion of photography and seeing so many amazing things along the way that I would have never got to experience otherwise. So I can't believe it. It's been a year. I just wanted to kind of look back over the year. I made some notes here on some things I saw and lessons I learned and, you know, in hopes that next year, hopefully I can keep going another year, you know, that I'll add to these experiences. So here, look, I made notes because I'm such a nerd. So I think one of the biggest things I learned was about animals in captivity. Along my journey, I've seen some pretty horrible animal abuse, particularly in Southeast Asia when it comes to um, elephants and tigers. And that really impacted the way I believe when it comes to animals in their rights. Now I'm not talking about um, vegetarians here and eating animals. I'm simply talking about the care of animals in captivity. I won't get into that. That's another whole, actually, that's another whole video. So my goal now in life is to see animals in the wild and in their natural habitats. Um, that's really important to me and to not see them in a cage. I feel that's not where they're supposed to be. So I just wanted to tell you some of the animals that I've got to see this year in the wild that I would have never seen had I not gone on this journey. So I got to see white cockatoos in the wild. Not only did I get to see white ones, but I got to see very rare black ones. Of course, I was in Australia, so kangaroos, wallabies, patamelons are an everyday experience there. You see them all the time. So that was exciting. I also got to see koalas in the wild, so along the Great Ocean Road. Uh, in Australia, there was koalas in the wild, uh, echidnas, which are little spiky, porcupiney, little anteater looking things. They were really cute. In Belize, I got to swim with nurse sharks and stingrays, so I got to see those in the wild. And then again in Australia, Australia has got to be the place for animals. I got to see a platypus, you guys, in the wild. It was in a creek. I got to experience it with somebody who um, was close to me, which was really awesome. And penguins as well. Uh, I got to see the penguins coming in off the ocean. And wombats. Wombats were so cute, and they just wiggle around with their little butts. So those are some of the animals that I got to experience. I know there's more. I got to see a rhinoceros beetle in Guatemala. I can't think of them all, but tons of animals in the wild. And for me, that's the only way I will see them now. So I won't go to zoos and I won't go to sanctuaries. I don't believe that the best interest of animals is in the care of these places. I think that they're there for profit. So for me, it's all about the wild. So I get really excited when I see animals in the wild. So some of the lessons that I learned were that the people of the world, one, really, really smart, and they know a lot of history that Oh, I don't know. I don't think many Americans know, and they probably know more about American history than we do. Um, but they really have a lot of lessons to teach us if we would just stop and listen. And so that's one thing that I've really tried to do is to slow down on my travels. I try to spend three weeks to a month in the places that I go so I get a better understanding of the cultures. So stop, listen, slow down. That's a big lesson uh, I've learned. Another big lesson I learned um, that has to do with animals is geese might be the most useless animal on the planet. I have no idea what purpose they serve. They are noisy. They shit everywhere. I, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody tell me a purpose for geese. Um, another lesson I learned was just because you respect and visit and go to religious places that don't necessarily follow your beliefs 
So in Indonesia and in Thailand, I visited Hindu and other religious temples. And just because I went there and acknowledged and respected their beliefs didn't mean that I had to take those beliefs on for myself. It was really important for me to see how other people believe in their God. I tend to think we are all following the same God. We've just named him different things. But it's really important for me to show that uh, religious respect to other um, cultures if I expect it for myself. So that's a really important lesson. And I'm really glad that I experienced those temples and those um, religious kind of customs that they follow. And doing so without judgment was important. Um, and so because this is a year, you guys, I've literally lived without a phone for a year. I have not had a phone for a year. So I know that's really hard to believe, but it's really true. And I've managed to stay in contact with all of my family um, due to social media and Facebook Messenger and Skype out having a phone. So actually it is possible in today's day and age. And this year I also, for the very first time, watched every single Star Wars. Yes, I am a total Jedi Knight. Uh, Yoda loves me. I love Yoda. We are like one. We are connected. So I get the big deal on Star Wars. I love it. I... I think it's the greatest thing ever. I really, really, really would like Anakin and Padme to have their own series so we can see kind of their love story develop. I really think somebody needs to do this. Please do this. I really would like to see some more of Anakin. Let's see, I hitchhiked for the first time. Oh, that was actually a little terrifying. I did that in Thailand and yeah, it'll be a while before I do that again. That was a bit scary when the guy turned around on his moped while he was supposed to be driving and kissed me. Whew, that was crazy. Let's see, I crossed three things off my bucket list. So I visited Stonehenge, I learned how to surf, and I went on a spontaneous road trip. So that was pretty exciting. Three things this year that I got to cross off. Yay. And let's see, I think the biggest thing is that I can share with you guys is just be open to new experiences. You know, don't let fear stop you from doing stuff. Of course, I was terrified when I left on this journey. Of course, I still get terrified when I go to new places. My hair is sticking up. Um, when I go to new places, it's scary and you have to meet new people and you kind of have to step out of your comfort zone. But every time you do that, every time you step out of your comfort zone, your comfort zone gets larger and so you have to continually step out and that just makes you know you a more open-minded um, less judgmental um, person so I think it's really important to go for it if you're thinking about doing something so even something simple I can't tell you enough don't let fear stop you just keep going do it do do what you think you're scared of whether it's flying, whether it's, you know, learning a new hobby that you, you know, you're scared you're going to fail at, just do it. People might think you're crazy. I'm sure a year ago, many people, maybe they still do, think that I went off the deep end or I was having a midlife crisis. You know, I sold my house. I quit my job. I sold my car. I sold everything I own besides what fits in a couple uh, Tupperware containers. I carry um, what I own in my backpack. And I am sure that most people thought I was losing it, you know. Um, but I have the support of my family, which is great. And I, I really do think along the way people realized that this was the path that I was supposed to take. And so I have amazing friends that encourage me and stick by me and you know follow this journey with me and so for you guys thank you so much to all the new people that i've met in my journey the list goes on and on and on i love you guys i love you guys i love you guys so much thank you for making this year amazing and um yeah, can you subscribe? Please, thank you. Everybody after the last video started to subscribe. If you wanna see more of these videos, hopefully they don't suck all the time. I have um, my birthday coming up, which I'm doing a really uh, 
big thing for me on my birthday and I will video that and um, it's something big. It's, it's something big. Um, so subscribe if you can. I don't know what button to push. Push one of them. It's down there. I've got my bottle here. It's really early in the morning. It's nine o'clock in the morning. I'm making this video, but I got a bottle of uh, Polish vodka when I was at the airport because I knew uh, alcohol is extraordinarily expensive in Norway. So I got this bottle for eight bucks. It's really good uh, vodka. And so this is uh, to my first year of travel. And hopefully this next year, I will be able to continue my travels and continue developing my skills in photography and bring you what I see from around the world. So in Polish, Nastrovia, and cheers to this year and to next. Mwah. Bye, guys.